Seb joins us now, along with his parents, Nick and Tracy, and his twin brother, Ben. Good to see all of you this morning. Seb, I mean, can you remember anything of that moment when you were waiting by the toilet door? Can you remember what happened? Well, I don't remember everything no. clearly, but I do remember talking to a, um, a boy called Drew, and I'm not entirely sure what, what we were talking about. I think it was about something like how we did on the rugby tour, mm. did we do well, what kind of tries we scored and that kind of rugby talk. And then all of a sudden the door was open and before I knew it I was <sighs> on the side of the road, yeah. bleeding a lot. And, and, a, and Ben, you were on the coach, weren't you? Because you'd be on the same yeah. tour mm -hmm. and you were upstairs. What, what did you know about, about Seb and what had happened? Well, I kind of, I knew nothing. All my, all, well, me and my friends thought there's some shopping or food had fallen out mm. but then when because all the kids were rushed upstairs at that p moment i knew something was wrong mm. because seb didn't come back up and did you ask them and they tried to keep you calm because that must have been frightening at that point wasn't it um well i didn't really know what was going on i was i was just playing on my friend's ipad mm. and then my friend's dad came and told me so Gosh, very scary. Now, I mean, you had, that was terrible luck that you were standing there, wasn't it, Seb? But you had brilliant luck that you had this specialist behind that was able yeah. to save your life. And now, well, how's life with your new leg and new equipment? Is it good? Personally, I don't think, I think that it's normal to have an artificial leg yeah. because I've got used to it. Mm. Good for you. I don't know. I personally think that I don't know any different. If that makes sense. Yeah, of course it does. yeah. And you have a you have a different sort of uh, yeah. different leg for running and doing sport and things. Yeah, I've got a running blade which attaches to this leg by getting a key. So I've got a special metal key. You and, and you slide it into this. Yeah, yeah. And then you turn it down, pull this off, put the blade on, and turn it back up. Brilliant. Amazing. Well, Tracy, look, Seb's so clearly an amazing young man, and he's, you know, full of life, and, and all sorts of things are going to be, go great for him. But you don't really want people to have to go through this, do you? So what do you not. want to change now? You're campaigning for well, change, aren't you? And it's, it's a shocking statistic that mm. one in five coaches don't comply to current safety standards. And, and we know that, how do we have... Uh, it, how do we have known how old that coach was uh, when the, the, the boys were getting on it two years ago? We wouldn't have allowed, you know, and we'd, if we'd have known about all the faults um, that the coach had at the time. You know, we, Seb would have died on the roadside mm -hmm. had, you know, the nurse and the surgeon not been travelling back. And by we, good luck, by good like, luck, in a very um, unlucky situation, yeah. Yeah, and we feel that the, the past two years, this has been almost brushed under the carpet, mm -hmm. and it is an issue of national importance, mm -hmm. which we feel it's really important to talk about it now, so that other families don't have to go through what we've yeah. we've suffered the last couple of years. Undoubtedly, Nick, I went on plenty of rugby tours and dodgy coaches over the years and then through university, and my kids go all the time with school trips. Uh, let's talk a, bit, a little bit about the regulations that you're talking about, because particularly it was the age of this coach that, that was crucial, wasn't it? Well, this was a 20-year-old coach, and I think what we've learned subsequently is that old coaches don't need to have the same safety features that new coaches have. So you have a real double standard here. Yeah. And I think if you combine that with the ability for operators to hide behind private number plates, you really don't know what, what sort of equipment you're getting on. So if you've got an old number, a private number plate, you don't know how, you because know number plates these days have the age of the car or exactly. the vehicle on it, don't exactly. they? So there's, there's no visibility or transparency over that, and that, that really needs to change. And I think that, you know, the concept of having a double standard where, you know, safe means safe, and if, if mm -hmm. something, if the legislation changes where a safety feature should be implemented onto coaches, it shouldn't just be implemented onto coaches that are manufactured from this date. It should be applied to all coaches because, you know, safe being safe at the end of the day. Very interesting, yeah, and, and terrifying. And, and are you still very much enjoying sports, Seb? Yes, I, I used to want to become a footballer, yeah. but now my ambitions have changed and I want to um, be a blade runner like wow. Johnny Peacock. Oh, yes, because oh, yeah. the Olympics starts on Friday and then yeah. the Paralympics yeah. are coming up in a couple of weeks. Yeah, in yeah, two weeks after that, so... We're going to be watching, watching that, right? Yeah. yeah. But also, the year after, we've got the World Championships in Great oh. Britain. So, I hopefully, I'm going to go see the Paralympics 
in London. Yeah, too right. Just quickly look at mum and dad to make sure the tickets are sorted. Uh, yeah. Let's down there to yeah, there's a bit of nervousness about whether they pull that one off. <laughs> well, yeah, you're an incredible young man, clearly. Got a great energy and a great positivity about yeah. your life, which is hugely admirable. Thank you very much. Not least because you've got, I'm sure, the two of you together are constantly Quite a running, formidable force. Yeah, running things around <laughs> your mum and dad. Uh, thank you for coming and sharing your story, Seb. It's been an absolute treat to meet you all. And thank fingers you. crossed with the campaign as well. Clearly, along the way, we know there's been a number of problems with the police investigation and things you've been let down. So hopefully we can sort yeah. of try and do something to try and turn that around and make a big difference because there'll be parents at home watching this morning thinking that's absolutely terrifying that that could happen to them. Well, you never think to check, no, do you? you just wouldn't. Just wouldn't. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you for guys. highlighting Thank you for coming you. all of us. Thank yes, very much. Thanks. When you were buried alive in the wake of this attack, were you left unconscious? So you came to sort of underneath dirt and debris? It was um, branches, ferns, shrubs were on top of me. When I first came around, it was just... I could hear my heart beat 